If you've sent mail through the U.S. Postal Service recently, you might have noticed it's been arriving faster. New Postal Service numbers show that the mail delivery this past summer has seen its strongest performance in the past year. That's good news, but it's not expected to last. And that's because the Postal Service is planning to start slowing the delivery of first-class mail in an effort to cut costs. It's all part of a 10-year strategic plan outlined by Postmaster General Louis DeJoy. You'll remember that DeJoy is the Trump loyalist who faced accusations of trying to sabotage mail-in balloting by gutting the Postal Service in the run-up to the 2020 presidential election. And other clouds hang over DeJoy as well. The FBI is investigating him for possible campaign finance violations, and ethics watchdogs recently raised alarms about a $120 million contract the Postal Service awarded to his former employer. Now, DeJoy's spokesmen have denied any wrongdoing. But there are lots of questions about the leadership of the U.S. Postal Service and its commitment to its mission, providing the nation with reliable, affordable, universal mail service. With us now for an exclusive interview is Amber McReynolds, a member of the U.S. Postal Service Board of Governors. She's one of three new members of the board nominated by President Biden. She's also CEO of the National Vote at Home Institute. It's great to have you with us. And I want to start with the Postal Service mission. And, and so what's your assessment of the Postmaster General's new strategic plan which really is the largest rollback of mail services in a generation. You've got longer delivery times, reduced post office hours, higher postage prices. There has been pushback from customers, postal employees, even some postal service regulators. But this plan is moving forward. Well, thanks for having me, Jeff. It's, it's great to be here. And uh, I think first and foremost, the important piece really of all of this as it relates to the Postal Service is, as you mentioned, we, we need to provide universal service across the country to everyone, regardless of where customers live. And the problem really with what the Postal Service has faced for a long time is that there are multi-dimensional challenges. And that means that there's got to be multi-dimensional solutions. So it isn't, it, it isn't a situation where we can just say, let's just fix this one piece and therefore service will improve. It is a multi-dimensional problem. And, and if you see uh, in the 10-year plan, and, I, and I'll caveat this with, I am a new member, as you mentioned, and I have two other uh, colleagues that are new members. So we were not part of you know, the process that the current board or the previous board went through to develop the 10-year plan with the executive leadership and, and leaders within the Postal Service. But as I've read this plan, there are significant multidimensional uh, solutions and programs in it uh, that will hopefully uh, address many of the problems that uh, have plagued the Postal Service in that multidimensional way that we've seen over time. Uh, and that includes process issues, that includes policy issues that we need Congress to act on, and it includes investment in technology and infrastructure, which is happening as we speak right now around the country. So this is a massive challenge, but it also means that there's massive opportunities to improve service for all Americans. Well, let's talk about the Postal Service's leadership. And we should explain for folks that President Biden can't remove the Postmaster General uh, directly. Only the board can do that. And that's because of rules that prevent uh, partisan meddling within the Postal Service. But a president can reshape the board by determining who's on it. And a lot of people assumed that with you and President Biden's other two picks now on the Board of Governors, that Mr. DeJoy's exit would soon follow. Why hasn't it? Well, so first and foremost, I mean, we are new members. We've, we've been to two board meetings. Uh, there has not been, uh, an, uh, you know, a discussion or a, a vote or anything like that with regards to changing leadership. So that's not been something that's been on the table. Uh, what I've been doing as a new, new governor is assessing and continuing to uh, look very closely at the metrics in terms of how the postal performance across the country uh, and as it relates to leadership leadership uh, is, is doing. And that's something that the, the current board members that were that have been on for a while, uh, they've been the ones making a lot of those decisions. And, and as new members, we're going to be a part of that going forward. What I will say is there are significant promising metrics that we continue to see in all of the uh, quarter releases for service standards. Uh, we're even seeing in some areas where service standards have gone back to pre-pandemic levels. Uh, and there is significant investment in improving the infrastructure. Uh, and as you know, and as many people know, one of my strategic focuses is certainly on election mail. And uh, we recently voted to establish 
a permanent elections mail committee that will focus on operational improvements and also communication uh, with regards to election mail, which is a hot issue for Americans across the country. And, and that's been one of my strategic priorities. And I'm really excited that the, the rest of my colleagues that are governors and executive leadership recognize the importance of, of that uh, service that we offer and, and continuing to improve it. So I, I guess the, the direct question is, should Louis DeJoy remain as Postmaster General? In my extensive coverage of the Postal Service, I've talked to postal employees, I've talked to customers who point to the service slowdowns and cutbacks, and they point the finger directly at him and the changes that he started instituting before the lead up uh, to the election. Uh, does his service warrant the confidence of the Board of Governors? Should he remain in that job? Well, I can't, I, I really cannot give you a, a direct answer on that at this point. I mean, I am I am new on the board. I'm continuing to evaluate uh, the performance of the post office generally. But what I would say also is the postmaster general was on the job, I think as of July 1st, a year. Uh, and, you know, many of the sort of uh, communication issues that were coming out of the White House during the presidential cycle created a lot of confusion in the public domain. I know I was certainly answering a lot of questions about the realities with regards to election mail last summer. And largely that was happening as the Postmaster General was walking into the job. Uh, the blue box issue and some of the sorting equipment issues, I can tell you, were things that are planned out over a long period of time. They happen every year. That is constantly evaluated. So that wasn't something that that, you know, happened as he was walking in the door. And I just think there was a lot of confusion around that. And certainly I was disappointed in the communications that were coming out of the Postal Service explaining that to the public, because I think they should have explained what they were doing and why more directly. And I've been very vocal about that. Um, so the, this is something- I, I'm sorry, if I may. It, it, sure. It, I was just gonna ask, because we're about to wrap up the show in the 20 seconds or so that we have left, can you commit that the Postal Service in the next election and in the, in the midterms will handle mail-in ballots effectively and won't have to be shamed or litigated into making sure that those ballots arrive on time? Absolutely. And actually before the midterms, I mean, there's a statewide election in California right now. There's statewide elections all over the country this this fall. And that's why why I push so hard and why the governors and my colleagues agreed to establish this election mail committee now, not wait till next year, because there are elections happening constantly and this needs to work uh, effectively. And so there's a huge commitment to do that. And that will continue into the future.